we need to talk about nature, not actual nature, the journal, the scientific journal, um, which is a British-based multidisciplinary science journal, probably the best in the world, or at least it used to be. Um, so I'm going to read a little e extract from Wikipedia. I know that's not the best source, but it summarized the sentiment very, very well. So it says, According to Science, another academic journal, being published in Nature has been known to carry a certain level of prestige in academia. In particular, empirical papers are often highly cited, which can lead to promotions, grant funding, and attention from the mainstream media. Because of these positive feedback effects, competition among scientists to publish in high-level journals like Nature and its closest competitor, Science, can be very fierce. And one of my lecturers while I was at university said that any scientist worth their salt would sell their mother for a publication in Nature. He said it as like a tongue in cheek, making fun of how seriously they take their careers. Haha, -ha, but what do you think of my mother? <laughs> <laughs> but the point being is that this is the, the like premier, premium um, journal of science. And of course, what a scientific journal is, is a place where you publish your research. So all the research, all of the things that further human knowledge um, go through these scientific journals. And this is supposedly the best one. And um, we're going to see that that might not actually be the case. So obviously here is the website, they publish articles, but um, many very important things um, have been published in Nature. One of them, for example, is that um, the sequencing of the human genome, I think that was in 2000, 2001, something like that. Very important breakthrough in the, the knowledge of mankind, I suppose you could call it. Um, there are lots of other things, lots of um, physics stuff has been published in there that I'm sure you're familiar with, although it's kind of all over my head. Um, but anyway, moving on to something else and just realized, is, sorry, go back. There's just an article okay. that's just pioneering smooth physics. <laughs> I've not heard what that is. It just makes you think of a smooth brave meme, but <laughs> I thought exactly the same thing. Yeah. But, um, what's he been up to? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 the derail enough stuff. Sorry. <laughs> so, so on to, um, this episode of contemplations I did with Carl, um, talking about the limitations of science. And I was talking about all the ways in which the scientific process, um, not necessarily a, as a theoretical means of getting to the truth, but science as an institution is limited and the, the scientific journals behaving like you're about to see is one of the, uh, the typically top reasons that I think, yes, yeah, science isn't, isn't exactly doing good work anymore. It's not doing proper science. It's doing ideology. And, um, there's no better. <laughs> Case for this than this next article, which um, is titled "Should Nature Endorse a Political Candidate?" Um, should sorry, should nature endorse political candidates? Yes, when the occasion demands it. And when does the occasion demand it, uh, comrade? It needs, comrade. Yes. So it says, political endorsements might not always win hearts and minds, but when candidates threaten a retreat from reason, science must speak out. So it's about to get as. Uh, annoyingly leftist as humanly possible. In October 2020, um, this journal endorsed Joe Biden for the next president of really? the United States. Oh, I had my Ivan Paul. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I wasn't expecting that. Um, it was not the first time we had endorsed candidates for a country's highest elected office. Oh, did they endorse N Donald Trump last time? No, they didn't. No, um, oh God. Nor were we the only scientific publication to do so, recognising, I'm pretty sure, the, the Feminist Journal of Economics, which I find hilarious that it exists, because they're like, yes, we can't get published in regular economic <laughs> journals because we don't understand the maths, so we've set up our own. Um, Flat Earth or astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly that. It's antithetical to actual economics. Mm. But anyway, my gripes about journals aside, um, it goes on to say- Only the Earth is flat. <laughs> uh. Sorry. Recognising that politics is becoming more polarised, we had already published an editorial explaining why nature needs to cover politics in our journalism, commentary and primary research when it relates to science in line with our mission statement. This week, Nature um, Human Behaviour publishes, I mean, that's terrible grammar, by the way. I like how they like to, to highlight their academic credibility and then they have this. It's either later this week, Nature Human Behaviour will publish or published in the past tense, but I'm going to stop being a pedant. Um, a study suggesting that nature's- Academics are fighting. You didn't spell it wrong. <laughs> Believe me, it gets more petty than that in academia. Um, 
Nature's 2020 endorsement led many supporters of now born President Donald Trump to lose trust in science and in nature as a source of evidence-based knowledge. These findings are based on a randomized experiment involving 4,260 US adults carried out in the mid-2021 um, during the COVID-19 pandemic by Floyd Zhang at Stanford University in California. So a Chinese person at the University of California. I'm sure, that's very good. But um, ignoring obvious bias aside, the results are still interesting regardless. It says, supporters of both Trump and Biden were presented with the author's summary of the messages conveyed in our October 2022 editorial. Um, this highlighted nature's criticism of the way Trump had handled the pandemic and the journal's expectations that Biden would do better. Participants were also given a screenshot of the title in the first paragraph and linked to the full text. They were then asked various follow-up questions. Participants who were Trump supporters did not view the summary favourably, I mean, of course, and compared with Trump supporters who had been shown text on a different topic, had a lower opinion of nature as an informed and impartial source on science-related issues facing society. Well, that might be because you've come out as not being a clear and impartial source. You absolutely... <laughs> Knuckle dragging morons. I mean, I mean, I've read some ah. crayon munching stuff, but like, that's actually really stupid mm -hmm. for an alleged like high level outlet to be publishing. It's like, well, we show people that we have uh, a bias, and then they thought we were biased. And this is somehow a problem. Um, the summary's effect on Biden supporters was positive, but oh, smaller. Really? <laughs> So it's like a net negative on, on their reach for doing so. And when participants were then prompted to read information from different sources about vaccine efficacy against um, new COVID-19 variants, Trump supporters who had been shown the summary of Nature's editorial were less likely to trust Nature's information on COVID-19 and also reported more mistrust in US scientists. Well, yes, because you picked a political position quite partisanly and seem to be only cheering on the evidence that supports that position as opposed to you know being seeking to be objective which is of course impossible but a, a noble thing to strive towards um carries on to say this experiment builds on the literature on trust in research among people with different political allegiances this includes the idea of confirmation bias whereby people on different sides tend to favor evidence that supports the views they already have while avoiding evidence that does not and the backfire or rebound effect whereby evidence that challenges a view can have the opposite effect to that intended. Do you really lack the self-reflection to see that you have confirma confirmation bias yourself in, in being like, yes, Joe Biden, basically an American hero? Like that, that's the, the kind it, of language yeah. they use. It really is disappointing because you think when you're growing up that the adult world is full of adults or something, mm -hmm. and then you realise that everyone's an idiot. I mean, yes. I mean, this sincerely. Like, they'll they'll know their subject really well. They'll have specialities that are really advanced that you'll never understand. There'll always be someone who's better than you a specific thing. But then when you go and see like basic stuff, they'll just somehow miss. It's supposedly one of the best outlets in the world for science, and just cannot even see what's right in front of them. I mean, they may as well be bashing their head against the wall and seeing what pattern the blood makes. Being like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> This this is our truth. I mean, this dude like, might be amazing at biology or something, but he clearly doesn't know anything about politics. Yeah. Or psychology, apparently, because, yeah. Confirmation bias, I'm afraid to say, is inherent in all human beings. It's inherent in this article, obviously. Um, but it carries on to say, the author um, acknowledges that it's just one experiment that is, uh, and that it is not clear whether the reported effects will be long-lasting, but the study does question whether research journals should endorse electoral candidates if... One implication is falling trust in science. And there's a lot to unpack here because, of course, they've acknowledged that, yes, maybe endorsing political candidates is not a good idea and, and research the impact of it. But do you need to trust science? Isn't the entire point of science, one of the largest themes in science, and I'm saying this as a scientist, is that you are skeptical of stuff. You don't trust things because, of course, trust implies that you believe something without Evidence. Sufficient evidence. Yeah. And that's antithetical to being a scientist. And if, if you think that you need to trust science rather than be skeptical towards it and help it along in its journey towards the, the truth, then you're an idiot. 
there's no other two ways about it. Trust you don't know what you're doesn't doing. factor into science. Yeah, like the whole point, no one ever spoke about trust when we were trying to prove something. It wasn't trust me, it's true. It's no, is it repeatable? Okay, I'm sure it's repeatable. In, in physics, you're like, yes, I, I trust the atoms to, to do the right thing. Trust any of it. <laughs> Look, this is what happens repeatedly. Yeah, you're looking in a microscope and you're like, mm, I don't trust you. Right, even when you get the quantum. So there is, there is, the idea of quantum trust even makes no sense when it comes to quantum. <laughs> it makes, well, people don't. I'm not going to bore people. Um, and it carries on to say, this is an important question uh, and there are, sadly, no easy answers. Yes, there are. Don't do it. Um, the study shows the potential costs of making an endorsement. <laughs> well, we saw the evidence. There is an easy answer, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> it's just like, here's what we should have done, but there is no easy answer. I mean, they actually have to be brain dead. I think they might be. I mean, the fact that so many actual legitimately good scientists want to be published in this journal still breaks my heart because it's just like, well, this is this is, should be the pinnacle of the best endeavour uh, towards truth that mankind has ever gone on. And it's doing this. It, it's so demoralising to me. I spent, what, an inordinate amount of time and money at university to get the qualifications I have just for this to happen. It's like, oh, great. Well, the mediocres are running the show. Yeah. Tyranny of the midwit. Um, and it says, considering the record of Trump's four years in office, this journal um, judged that silence was not an option, which is a term straight out of a progressive's mouth, isn't it? Um, Nature's October 2020... Um, I keep on going to say 2022 for some reason. It's not even the current year either. Um, editorial was an appeal to readers in the United <laughs> States to consider the dangers that four more years of Trump would pose. And that here, this is just naked left-wing politics. Not only for science, but also for the health and well-being of US society and the wider world. Trump had laid waste to science and scientific institutions at home on issues of COVID to climate change and gutted environmental regulations, even in the face of increasing climate risk. I mean, they've drank the Kool-Aid on all that, haven't they? Despite the fact that... Did you know Orange Man bad? Yes. Um, you too. At a time when the world needed to unite to deal with these um, and other global threats, he took an axe to international relationships, pulling the United States out of the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement and the United oh, really? um, so Nations right? Science Agency, UNESCO. You're experts on all geopolitics as well. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah, I forgot geopolitics was a science. I mean, the whole notion of political science is questionable. Is yeah. it really a, a it's science? It's not really science. I mean... It's studies, as well as political it's, studies. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, my opinions, science. <laughs> um, he moved to defund the World Health Organization, and he walked away from a deal um, that the United States had carefully negotiated with Europe, China, and Russia to prevent Iran's government from enriching weapons-grade uranium. Yeah. I mean, didn't he get... A, a, basically physics. Didn't he get a Nobel Peace Prize for something like that? Um, also, the World Health Organization covered up for China at the start of the pandemic. This is a provable thing. We know they did this. But they did it for science. Yes, it, it, it's science, yes, to, to cover up for the communists. That's, that's the scientific position, apparently. All right, then. He's, this clearly clever person goes on to say, um, we live in troubling times for research and for society. Nature's endorsement for the November 2022, uh, I did it again, 2020 US election. I think me and you have something in common. You, you can never know when it's Friday and I can never know what year it is. Together, we can both be worse. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it carries on to say, um, I'm going to skip through this because it's, it's just being politically partisan for ages. Nature doesn't often make political endorsements, but and we carefully weigh up the arguments when considering whether to do so. Well, you clearly haven't because you've just come out as a partisan hack for Biden. Um, when individuals seeking office have a track record of causing harm, when they are transparently dismissive of facts and integrity, when they threaten scholarly autonomy, when they are disdainful of cooperation and consensus, I mean, consensus in science isn't that, again, antithetical. Um, it becomes important to speak up. We are, <laughs> we use our voice sparingly and always offer evidence to back up what we say. But you've just said that Trump is basically evil, danger, orange man bad, with no evidence. Where's, where's the evidence of what you say? I mean, you, you said he did some stuff, but there's no evidence that it's been directly harmful. Like withdrawing from Nor the World is any Health of it within your purview. Yeah. <laughs> withdrawing from the World Health Organization was a really good way of saying, yes, they did this really bad thing. We need to punish them. We're not yeah. giving them money anymore. Well, they had Dr. Tedros, who was a Northern, Northern Tigray Ethiopian communist, basically, 
who worked with the Chinese when he was in government in his own country, and then covered up for the, the Chinese Communist Party when he was the head of the World Health Organization. It doesn't get clearer than that. I mean, what are you, what, are you out of your mind to say that's wrong? Just to pick up on one specific thing, I'm not going to tediously go through and say and debunk it all, because I also find that tedious myself. Um, but I wanted us to go to the actual article where they're talking about endorsing President Biden. And I think it's amusing to look at it in retrospect because some of these statements have aged absolutely horrifically. So, why nature supports Joe Biden for US president is titled, and it says, We cannot stand by and let science be undermined. Joe Biden's trust in truth, evidence, science, and democracy make him the only choice in the US election. I mean, that could have come out of Nancy Pelosi's mouth. It's, <laughs> it's not even an attempt to cover it up. No, it's just naked ideology, isn't it? On the 9th of November 2016, the world awoke to an unexpected result. Donald Trump had been elected president of the United States. Ooh, scary. Uh, this journal did not hide its disappointment. This is... I wonder why those... Those Republicans in the United States, or the, the Donald Trump voters, believed that they were not a reliable source and were partisan. I mean, I, I can't possibly tell you why. Um, but nature observed US democracy was designed with safeguards intended to protect against excesses. It is founded on a system of checks and balances that make it difficult for a president to exercise absolute power. We were hopeful that... The, I mean, the, the irony of this as well is that Joe Biden has enacted more executive orders. He's acted more like a dictator than any president in US history. And they're like, yeah, he's the best guy. Again, they're whining about Trump, not scientific, any of that. They're just like, well, he's I mean, got toxic attitudes towards women. <laughs> That's scientific. Yes. <laughs> toxic as well. Is that um is that a scientific term? Yeah. Is that you know yeah, it's a repeatable study we can do? He he just um releases poisonous substances from his skin in the presence of women that is toxic and hazardous to women. That's the only way that that would be a scientific statement. The magus biologists have come to the conclusion. <laughs> He's some sort of amphibian. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it goes on to say, um, toxic attitudes towards women, blah, blah, blah. How wrong we turned out to be. No US president in recent history has so relentlessly attacked and undermined so many valuable institutions from science agencies to the media. Are these really valuable? Is the media valuable? The, I don't think the so. The media, a paragon of truth and science. <laughs> I mean, it's yes. how you know you're dealing with a moron. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure they probably left their, their window that they were licking to write this article. Um, but yes, it carries on to say, his administration has picked fights with the country's long-standing friends and allies. I mean, he's negotiated better trade oh. deals. <laughs> it's picking fights with China, our, our dear ally. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's it's just really dumb stuff. There's 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 no attempt to be objective here. It is just, as I've said multiple times in the segment, clear Democrat partisanship, and it's really really sad to see because you'd think that something that is meant to be the tippity top of scientific truth. <laughs> I don't know. I like that phrase. I know it, it's underused, isn't it? Um, would have a bit more integrity, have a bit more respect for actual truth. I mean, that's the whole purpose of them existing. But they've just made their, their raison d'etre um, completely obsolete because they're like, yes, we, we, we don't like truth anymore. We like ideology. Political parties is where it's at. Truth, that science business, not interested. Democrats, on the other hand, yeah, these, these guys, that's where it's at. But um, yeah, just to reiterate, there's um, another article which I didn't want to bore you with, but it's basically saying the same sort of stuff, why nature needs to cover politics now more than ever. Uh, yeah, this is the, the one that they did to support them endorsing Joe Biden. So you can check that out if you want to. And then moving on to this one. Here that this is their post on Twitter. And I didn't actually want to talk about this because they talk about this in the article. But if you scroll down, John, um, there, there should be a guy posting. Um, where's it gone? A bit further. Um, there we go. Wait, stop. This guy, Bruce Fenton. If you scroll up a bit. Um, nature tweets, wearing masks should probably be one of the last things we stop doing. And then, of course, he says, this you. And then, systematic racism that existed when lax cells were taken still exists today. So he's just highlighting clear um, partisanship. And if you scroll down again, John, a little bit, uh, when you see elected leaders demonizing educators and weaponizing education, it's a 
five alarm fire for democracy. Uh, again, nature. So yes, they've supposedly on the side of truth and and reason. And Amazingly, only Democrats have truth and reason. Yes, it's funny that, isn't it? It's almost like you're you're being ridiculously partisan. So I wanted to point out to a growing trend here. This is um, a metric for academic freedom. Freedom to basically publish research into whatever you want. And obviously, there are some reasonable limitations, like you can't um, get humans off of the street and splice them with animals, um, oh. despite my best efforts. Um, but you look at countries here, and you notice that the Anglosphere countries are not near the top, are they? It's the, the Czech Republic, number one, um, Estonia, Belgium, Italy, Germany, somehow. I mean, actually, yeah, they have a track record of not having very high standards, don't they, the Germans, when it comes to research efficacy. But the less I said that about that, the better. And then you have Honduras, Luxembourg, and places like that. And if you scroll down a bit, John, we can. Um, they've highlighted some of the uh, the, the bigger countries. Um, bit down a bit further, it's a bit more than that. Um, <laughs> oh God! Yes, um, and you start getting lower and lower. But basically, um, I think you've gone past. Actually, um, that was my mistake. But you have the United States of America in the top forty to fifty, which are right at the bottom there. Yes, United States of America, Africa. and the UK's slightly higher up. You can see it up there. Yeah, I did beneath see Ecuador um, and Georgia and Mali. Mali has more econo um, economic, um, academic freedom, uh, uh, a developing African country than more with ISIS. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but the UK more closed-minded apparently than. I did African see that the most problematic Anglo country, Australia, was at the top <laughs> of the Anglo countries, though. Yeah. Also, Benin, known for its dependence on the slave trade, more more academic freedom than the UK. So yes, the Anglosphere countries seem to be um, dropping the ball with this. We used to be best in the world for this sort of thing, and we are not anymore. It's other European countries, some Latin American countries, and Africa, and uh, perhaps a, a spattering of Asian countries as well. But yes, we are failing, basically, at being good scientists it seems. And um, finally, I wanted to point to the fact as well that there are other aspects that I've covered recently in science in that they're trying to police language, which I think you've talked about briefly as well, that men and women or men and women have to be changed. Lots of language, uh, like the, the term invasive species, racist. I mean, you're talking about animals. doesn't matter. But no, racist. It suggests an invasion. Oh, it's militaristic as well. Oh, that's terrible. So yes, obviously the precise scientific language that I've studied and had to learn is apparently bigoted, homophobic, transphobic, whatever it is, all of these things. And I think that this is signaling to me that yes, science is completely captured by wokeness at this point. Anyone who is opposed to it, um, opposed to this sort of thing, has no con institutional control over what gets published. Um, their position at say a university. I mean, you only need to look at people like Peterson. That was many years ago now, what, five years ago that he got pushed out of his university, as, among many others as well. So I think it's fair to say that the, the institution is pretty much captured at this point. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Contemplation series, this episode on euthanasia, and the debate we're in. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.